Sekaloth sent forth a telepathic summons to his major domo, the skink priest, Zekiz. Prepare my forces to march, the Quadal Lord commanded. To where, great one? The time has come to march to the sea. When we shall arrive, I shall call Tal Kriash from the waves and assert my rightful claim. Yes, master, the little skink responded. What path shall the army take to the sea? We shall take the most direct path. But master, that shall take us through the valley claimed by the barbarian worshippers of the dark gods. The Quaddle's eyes narrowed. I am tired of these endless distractions, Zekis. Either the barbarians will stand aside, or they will be destroyed as were the sylvan elves. Now prepare the march at once. The skink priest bowed once and ran to fulfill his master's will. He knew the barbarians would not stand aside but he was equally aware that his master was long past the point where he cared for how many warm bloods would have to die to accomplish his goals. All right, got another narrative battle for you guys tonight. Uh, we are doing my Saurian Ancients versus uh, my Warriors of the Dark Gods as played by Skip um, in a 4,500 point narrative battle with the breakthrough scenario. Um, now I designed both of these lists, uh, Skip is just helping me out because it's kind of boring to play both sides of the army. Um, and he hasn't played Warriors in a long time, so I think he was looking forward to this as well. Um, again, we are using the map pack, uh, from the Ninth Age forum site to design our, our board with the, uh, all the terrain on it. So, we've had a lot of fun doing that, and it, it definitely gives different setups although this is probably the most open one we've played uh what i actually do is i pull up the map pack on my tablet and just start flicking through it and one of the guys will tell me to stop and i'll put my finger down and whatever it stops on that's the map we play so um but i guess with such straightforward armies in this case the open area certainly i think gave the advantage to my opponent uh, but let's go ahead and start talking deployment. <clears throat> okay, so starting on the left side for the Warriors of Chaos, we are, sorry, Warriors of the Dark Gods, we have a Fallen Beast of Wrath. Uh, then there is a unit of five Wasteland Knights of Pestilence with full command, and they have the Stalker standard on them. Next is a unit of 16 Wasteland Warriors. Oh, actually, I just noticed a, a mistake. There's only 15 on the models. Uh, 15 of the models there. It looks like I accidentally added too many. Um, but yeah, so they have full command, paired weapons, and the Baroner of Fury. Hanging out with them on uh, the front left corner from what you can see here is a Harbringer of Wrath, which is the battle standard bearer with paired weapons. Uh, he also has the Armor of Fortune and Soul Reaper. Next is a unit of 20 Barbarians with full command and flails. They have the Mark of True Chaos. And hanging out with them is a Sorcerer, Wizard Master with three spells from uh, the Path of Occultism. Behind them is the Army's General, a Harbringer of Pestilence on a Demonic Steed. <coughs> And he has the Ogre Sword and a shield. Uh, next in the front line is a unit of Wasteland Trolls. Uh, just six of them with no upgrades. Then there is a unit of five Warhounds. Behind the five Warhounds is a unit of ten Fallen of Wrath. Next to that is a Blood Beast who is bound to the Army's General. And then a Wastelands Giant with the Mark of, or the Chosen of Lust upgrade. So he's got like movement 8 and uh, rerolls charge and flee distances, I think. 
So, uh, on my army, uh, starting on the right here, we'll go right to left. I have five Caymans with uh, Musician and Standard Bearer. Then I've got a unit of 32 Saurus with Spears, Shields, and the Serpent upgrade. They also have full command. In front of them is a Salamander. Next to that are eight uh, Skinks with Blowguns. Behind that is a Taurosaur with the Engines of the Gods upgrade. Then there is 20 Temple Guard with full command. Hanging out with them is Sekaloth, my Quaddle Lord to the lore of alchemy this time. Uh, and he has the book, and that's it. Uh, in front of that is a unit of 10 Skink Skirmishers with Javelins and Shields. Then there is a unit of 20 Saurus, Saurus Warriors with Hand Weapon, Shield, and the Flaming Banner. They also have full command as well. Uh, in front of them is <clears throat> another Salamander. And then hiding in the forest here is a Stygiosaur. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and get into the action. So... <coughs> My opponent got the opportunity to go first and dropped his whole army, so he gets to go first. And he starts off real aggressively, moving everything up. And everything up on this side. He's bringing it just as one solid wall, with the idea that it, I'm kind of packed in here, and I'm probably not going to be able to escape as long as he doesn't give me any holes. Which is not a terrible thought. So, my turn one, because uh, he's got no magic, well, no magic that really matters at this point, no shooting. Um, <clears throat> so, I move up very little, uh, mainly just to get some targets to shoot at and to be ready for counter charges when he starts coming in. I do the same thing here. The biggest thing I do is I move up the Stygiosaur into the forest, uh, forgetting that the knights had... The Stalker standards, I don't care about the forest. Uh, I do end up doing some good magic this turn and getting off Molten Copper and rolling a result of 12 for the number of hits. So I ended up getting enough Strength 2s in here to kill one of the six trolls. Then I start doing some shooting and kill two of the three dogs. And then I do some more shooting and kill the other three. So uh, his chaff I don't really have to worry about anymore. Then we go to Warriors of the Dark Gods, turn two, and the Pestilence Knights charge. I use my breath weapon as a stand and shoot and only kill two of them. I know it looks like we've killed three. That was because we forgot that he had um, the Stalker standard and one tied to Dangerous Terrain, but we will put him back in a minute before we get to combat. Uh, over here, he actually failed the Restrain check with... The Fallen, and they tried to charge the Skinks, who stood and shot and ended up killing two of them, and then they failed the charge. So that's where they end up. And over here, this guy runs like crazy random movement to get over to the fight, but it, I don't think it was physically possible for him to get into it, because he rolled almost max to get where he was. And everything else here advances. They're leaving the, the Fallen a little bit behind, but not much. Um, just because they failed the charge, but he is in the point where he's threatening everything, and I've got to figure out some way to slow him down or start breaking his lineup, or I'm in a potential lot of trouble here. So his magic goes off, he gets the grave call off, and sacrifices dudes to it to get the strength six, and I rolled like garbage to, to dispel it, so he kills one of my salamanders. And then ends up getting Pentagram of Pain off and killing a few of the Skinks, but they don't panic. Uh, then we go into combat. These knights just absolutely kill the uh, Stygiosaur and overrun so that they're not going to get charged by my Saurus Warriors here. And they end up way behind my lines. And then we go into my turn two, and I go ahead and charge the Caymans at the Giant because I'm a moron. Um, I forgot the Giant goes faster than them. Um, I'm One of the downsides of playing so many armies is I kind of get certain things confused. 
Uh, I thought the Caymans were Initiative 3, and they're not. Um, so, like, once I had completed that charge, I looked down at my sheet and realized I'd made a mistake. So this made me real nervous. Then I bring these guys over here to block up his warriors. Uh, also, again, forgetting that with a random movement, he can just, like, turn this guy around and come get me. So I'm kind of playing a little sloppy here, and it's a little annoying. Uh, then I go over here and start blocking up these guys, uh, figuring that maybe I can redirect and come in with some flank charges with my big Soros brick. And I am absolutely sorry with this garbage picture, but all I, all you can see I did is I turned the sword guys a little bit to look at that random mover because I was still thinking he was coming over here for some reason. All right, now the blurry is all done. Um... I end up uh, getting these, I, I don't get any magic off this phase because I'm rolling garbage for magic like I always do. I, I honestly don't know why I bother taking like big expensive wizards. Magic never really seems to work out for me when I do that. It's much better I think when I take a number of small wizards. I'm not sure why. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so the salamander goes here and I do get lucky and roast another troll. Uh, then over here, I kill one of the knights with the shooting power from the uh, Altar of the Ancients. It throws out like D3 metal seeking or metal shaping hits, so I killed one there. And I kind of got lucky here, I think, because uh, the giant goes first and gets the thump uh, result which means he picks one model and just does 2d6 beat down to it. Uh, and I failed the, the initiative check to stop him, so he picked up my champion and beat it to death. Uh, or no, I didn't have a champion in this unit, so he must have just picked up a random guy and beat him to death. Like 11 wounds. It was something stupid. Um, but luckily, because it wasn't a challenge, none of that counted as carryover. Um, but... It didn't really come to that because my remaining uh, Caymans murdered the giant and then I overran to get out of sight from the Blood Beast. Then Warriors of the Dark Gods go and things keep going wrong. Um, he charges the Blood Beasts at my Skinks who fail their fr uh, terror check and turn and run off. He then redirects to the Salamander and succeeds his charge. Um... I don't think he tried charging with the Fallen, um, but I'm not sure. And then over here you can see he succeeded his charge with the Trolls into the flank of my Saurus Warriors. Which sucks, but I actually am feeling okay about it because the way he had to do it, because um, he couldn't get in there, is he's losing one of his Trolls. And because we played with closed lists... He doesn't know I have the flaming standard in here. So I still have like six attacks with flaming to the side. So I might be able to hurt him. And <clears throat> I've got steadfast for a pretty good amount of time here. At least long enough, hopefully, to not break and die and, and turn around is what I'm thinking. And then over here in random movement, he slams into the back of my skinks with his fallen beast. And everything else here kind of advances. He's he's slowly sweeping around um, to kind of close me off. And and there's just there's so much here, and my units are so big. Um, I'm I'm getting really screwed by that. I don't have a lot of ways to move and get to the targets I want to get to. Um, so my opponent's doing a real good job at kind of determining the flow of the game so far, and I'm certainly feeling the pressure at this point. Um, so yeah, the, uh, Fallen Beast kills all but one of the Skinks, Skink auto breaks and is run down, and the Fallen Beast ends up way behind his lines. The Blood Beast obviously kills the Salamander, overruns, clips the Saurus, and has to redirect, um, or I guess not redirect, it has to basically come into the middle of them. Which I'm okay with. <clears throat> He's going to do some damage to me probably. But just with the raw number of attacks this unit gets. 
I should be able to take the Blood Beast out. And then over here, um, he only kills two of my Saurus Warriors because he either he rolled like garbage or I rolled really well. And my Flaming Banner is on, so my six guys all hit and all wound, and I killed two trolls from an attack in the flank. Um, so they break, I turn and fail to run them down. And then it's my turn. Um, so I went with an overhead shot here so you could actually see what happens. Um, so my Saurus warriors at the top, the green ones, charge the trolls to make them flee. Um, and then when they flee, I redirect and go into the front of his, his barbarian unit here. Then I send my temple guard. Now that the, those guys are out of the way, that's just enough room for my temple guard to squeeze in and hit the flank of the blood beast. Uh, I move the Taurosaur here to kind of keep an eye on these threats off to the side, but it's also still within nine inches of the two remaining knights, so I can blast them with the engine of the gods next turn. And my skinks end up rallying now that my BSB in general is close enough for them. So uh, things are okay. The caimans turn around and stare down the fleeing trolls that are coming at them. Uh, magic, I end up dropping the Blood Beast's armor by one, is all I got off. Uh, so we go into shooting, and I end up doing enough wounds to kill these two, uh, knights. And then combat goes on, and I, uh, kill uh, almost all of the barbarians. I break them. Uh, I do not catch them, so you see they've escaped, and I ended up clipping his general. So, I didn't get the points for the unit. Um, I think I, I'm, I'm getting half of the points for the unit at this point, but it's like, I didn't get the unit or his caster, and I slammed into his general and presented the flank of these Saurus to <coughs> his uh, Wasteland Warrior unit, and that, he's probably going to make me pay for that mistake. Um... Over here, obviously, this Blood Beast is not going to handle, like, half my army, so it dies, and I just reform. So, Warriors of the Dark Gods, turn four, the Fallen attack, uh, charge the Skinks, um, I think I stand and shoot, so they take some damage, and in comes the flank charge from the Warriors, not a huge surprise. His uh, Barbarian unit reforms? I actually think we did this wrong now that I'm looking at it. I think he reformed so that he could get a charge. Or no, he rallied. And when he rallied, he did the reform like this so he could try and get the Fallen one in there. Um, but he failed. He was like half an inch off, so he didn't actually touch me. Uh, he did also rally with the trolls because he's within range of his general's leadership. Obviously, uh, he gets no real magic of note. Um, <clears throat> the fallen here murdered the skinks and overrun so that they can't be seen by my Saurus. And death comes swiftly to the Saurus up top. Um, and he catches them with his general and fails to catch them with everything else. So they're kind of set there. Best thing about this is this is a beautiful flank charge now for my temple guard. And that's exactly what happens. Um, I throw the temple guard in the flank, which actually gives me enough room <coughs> to attempt to charge a long bomb charge into the back of the trolls with the Saurus. I think I needed a 10 and ended up sticking it. So... I got Caimans in the front, Saurus in the back, and those trolls are probably toast. Uh, I end up, I didn't take a picture of the magic face separately, but I did get a corruption of 10 off on his general. Um, and the trolls just get murdered, and I turn and, and face the general. And over here, my Temple Guard absolutely slaughter the Wasteland Warriors and overrun into the Fallen One. 
Warriors of the Dark Gods turn five. The uh, fall in, reform, and push up. Which, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, they... Oh, no, they're light troops. That's why they can do that. I was thinking they didn't have a musician, but they're light troops, so who cares? Um, and he basically bails his wizard out of the unit of... of uh, barbarians figuring that they're dead. He also ran his general around to the flank of my two big units over there. Uh, so we go into combat. I do kill the uh, fallen one and overrun into his. Maybe I don't remember. Maybe he broke. But anyway, I get into the barbarians. So, my turn five, uh, <clears throat> this is actually after combat. I killed the Barbarians, turned and looked at his general. I'm still looking at his general with the Saurus. And I remember that Breakthrough is the objective and Caimans score. So, I run the Caimans like hell <laughs> over towards his uh, deployment zone. He's not quite there yet, but uh, the big problem is, is I didn't manage to get out of the general's line of sight so i'm still potentially charge bait there so warriors of the dark gods turn six uh just because he's got a butt ton of attacks he decides to go ahead and send the fallen into the flank of my source warriors and he sends his general into the back of my caimans uh i think my taurusaur and his wizard were having like a shooting contest so he like runs around here to throw some more spells you know, he does have one wound on him at this point. So then, uh, in combat, his general fluffs, only does two wounds to the Caimans, and the two Caimans in the back turn around and murder his ass. Uh, I rolled really well. He didn't have, didn't have any ward saves, and his armor was depleted, because <coughs> I think I got another corruption of 10 off on him, and so he didn't really have any defenses, so I ended up landing five... I, I landed five attacks, I think, and wounded with three of them, and he didn't save anything, and so he died. And over here, uh, he does a few wounds to me, but my uh, spear block ends up killing all but one of the fallen. They flee and break, and it is at this point that my opponent throws in the towel. As Sekaloth looked at the significant losses inflicted upon his forces by the barbarians, he felt his ancient blood boil. Had he more time, he would seek out all of those vermin and punish them for their transgressions against him. Once he had claimed Tal Kreash, perhaps these fools would be the first to feel his wrath as he used that power to crush the peoples of this land underfoot. The Koala Lord sent his thoughts out to his forces to draw them together. Come, we march on the elves. As his forces reformed, Sekaloth sent a mental command to his new slaves of the beast herd. Commence your attack. I shall join you shortly. Sekaloth knew that the herds would have little chance against the full might of Port Carbion, but he did not care. All they had to do was provide him the opportunity to get close enough to complete the ritual to summon and take control of Tal Kriash. If they died after that point, well, it would be one less race he would have to break to establish his new kingdom. <clears throat> All right, so uh, obviously with the surrender, uh, that is a Saurian Ancients victory in the top of six. Um, all in all, this was a pretty fun game. It, it kind of went back and forth. Um, I definitely think the big thing that, that won it for me is just the, the bodies I had. Um, it's kind of hard to deal with big groups of like 30 Saurus. Um, I made some pretty bad mistakes here in general. Um, and just, it, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I think I, I kind of misplayed certain things. Uh, not taking advantage of, of 
my magic maybe might be a, another good thing. I just, I didn't really roll real well for magic in general, so I kind of had to make do with what I could, um, which is what makes me a little nervous about using these big 700-point wizards. Uh, when the magic dice go well for you, it can be amazing, but I was at mediocre at best in terms of the wins uh, this whole game, and it just, I don't think other than being a general and a BSB, that the Quaddle really had any impact on the game at all, which is pretty sad in general. I think if I'm looking at just raw impact, I think the engine of the gods on the back of the Taurusor did more uh, just murdering those knights. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a fun game. Th this is actually a list that I am considering taking to uh, Southern Assault. I don't know if it's in the front right now because, again, taking the quaddle just seems risky. And it's weird for me to say that because, like, in 8th edition, I never felt that was the case. You, you took the quaddle because it was the best choice. But now it seems like the riskiest choice. And I, I don't even know that I like it better than taking characters or a guy on the back of the the big alpha carnosaur but we'll see i've still got a long time before that tournament so I, I can play with some other lists um i know my opponent had a lot of fun playing with the warriors um he and he played it very well he brought he kind of maintained a steady pressure on me um and kind of forced me to to deal with things and i i realized i got lucky in a few places um Getting lucky and breaking his trolls was, I mean, was, was the thing that opened the can up. Because I knew if I if I wasn't able to find a break in that and start moving my stuff, he was just going to take me one-on-one -on -one because my units were too big to maneuver easily. Um, so, so he definitely did that very, very well. Um, I'm still not 100% sure I like occultism as a lore, just in general. Um, he got a couple of good spells off with it, but in general, it's kind of meh. Um, but he seemed to have fun with it. Uh, I think he forgot that the giant was Mark Lust, so it had extra movement. And I don't know whether he purposely chose to put the Fallen One on his lines, or the Fallen Beast, whatever it's called, on his lines, or if he just flat forgot or didn't know that it can ambush and move after it's ambushed. Uh, I forgot to ask him that after the game, but, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun. We are pushing to, uh, sort of the conclusion of, of the Saurians ancients line here. Uh, they are going after Tal Kriash, whatever it is. And, uh, when that gets revealed, I think there, there will be some fun to be had, um, so I'm, I'm kind of interested to see where the story goes from here, and I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Uh, just as a last thing, I uh, wanted to remind everyone about my Patreon. If you would like to help support the channel and the hobbying we do, the tournaments we go to, and that sort of fun stuff, um, certainly go to the link that is down in the description below and help us out. For those who have already done so, Thank you ever so much. Uh, your patronage is certainly appreciated, and I hope I continue to live up to it. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we will catch you on the next one.